What is up guys, it's your boy Solam here, back with another classic WoW video for Season of Discovery. Now today we're talking about gold making in phase 3, and something you will probably start noticing when phase 3 comes out is that not everything when it comes to professions will be taught to you by the trainer, and as a matter of fact very few things and very few crafts will be taught to you by your trainer. It kinda depends on what professions you have, but for alchemy for example you get way more crafts by focusing on the different recipes that are available to you in the open world, and by vendors across the entirety of Azeroth, and just different recipes that you get access to in different ways. Based on that, in this video I want to cover some profitable or highly likely profitable recipes that are available in phase 3 that you should be on the lookout for. So once again we're taking a look at recipes in this video that will be available in phase 3 and that you should probably go out and take a look if you can get. Some of them you get from vendors, some of them are limited supply and some of them you get from killing mobs and rares in the open world as well. Now this is just going to be one of my phase 3 preparation videos when it comes to gold making in phase 3, and if you want to have early access to all of them, check out my gold making guide through the link down below. This is a fully gold making guide that I made for Classic WoW, it also includes a Season of Discovery, and Vanilla WoW, World of Warcraft, Classic Era, it's basically how to make gold in Classic WoW, and we have Season of Discovery updates. For now, based on phase 2's update, it's now 157 pages long, and it contains more than 50 different gold farms that you can do right now to make gold, all the way from level 1 to level 60, and differented into like level brackets so you can do them in phase 1, phase 2, phase 3, and even phase 4 when that comes out. By getting this guide you also get the best gold making advice that I personally have, my auction house strategies, my investments, and on top of that you get access to a private gold making community, which is where I'm sharing even more tips and tricks, and really access to videos. So videos like this one, phase 3 investments, phase 4 investments, phase 3 gold farms, everything I have to offer when it comes to gold making videos, you will get them before they go public. So if you really want to make more gold in Seasonal Discovery, check it out, the link is down below. I'm sharing all the tips and tricks that I personally used to make 10,000 gold in phase 2. And just to show you guys, I actually do have that much, let me go over to my TSM ledger. I think we just hit 9.6, right? Actually it's gone down now, so 9k. 9k plus 500, so 9.5k at the moment. But yeah, if you want to check it out and you want to have early access to gold making videos and you want to have the guide, check it out, the link will be down below. And if you do get it, thank you so much, it really, I really do appreciate it, it really helps me out, and I think I can help you make some gold as well, it could be a win-win scenario. With that being said, let's take a look at some recipes that I would recommend you try your best to get in phase 3. Now, for this video I'm going to be focusing mostly on two different professions, it's the two that I have, and it's tailoring and alchemy. There are definitely more recipes out there, but for example engineering gets way more from their trainers, and you also get some recipes available in phase 4. When it comes to phase 3, alchemy is absolutely massive, so either way let's go and take a look at some recipes right here. So opening up, uh, we can take a look at Wowhead, there are some recipes that are pre pulled up so you can take a look at. We have the pattern for the fell cloth pants. Now this one is really useful because it increase, increases damage done by shadow spells by up to 26, and it's level 50. Level 50 requirement, really good pre-biss, could even be biss overall for shadow priest, even something like if if warlocks make a return, like affliction warlock, we're getting the ability to crit now from damage over times, and we're already seeing warlocks do really well parses on AoE fights because you can spam shadow bolt with shadow bolt volley through the AoE. So that rune is really good to have the shadow bolt volley, but Overall, this one could be really good as either a pre bis or a full bis alternative, and you get this one from a vendor in Moonglade. Now, on the vendor in Moonglade, it's on limited supply, so it's only one person that can buy this one at a time, and it's one gold at the vendor, and you can probably flip it for way more on the auction house. So, um, you can even sell it on the auction house. If you can't get it at the vendor, you can pay a premium, a market price, and buy it from the auction house, but I would recommend checking out the vendor though. He also sells like enchanting cloaks, superior defense, and the formula for Ruined Arcanite Rod. 
On top of that, we have another pattern, the pattern for cinder cloth robes. This one is um, a cinder cloth gloves, so 11 spirit, but also 17 fire spell damage, and level 49. This one is probably not going to be full abyss, but it could be, depending on what loot drops in the brand new raid and the uh, revamped dungeons and stuff. But overall, 17 fire spell damage is either going to be abyss, or at least pre abyss, or a very good alternative, which people can buy on the auction house. It also requires 3 heart of fires to make, it is 4 bolt of rune cloth, and 1 rune thread. It's dropped by the twilight fire guard in Searing Gorge, level 48 to 49 elite, which can probably be soloed by most people at level 50. And it's in Searing Gorge, so Searing Gorge is a really good place to be. We have another pattern following the same thing right here, it's a cinder cloth vest, basically the same thing but vest this time instead of gloves, it's a level 47 item, and 24 fire spell damage. Now this one is not going to be abyss. You even have the ones from Normer again, which offers a really good alternative, I think it's 23 spell power on those, but also some stamina and intellect and stuff, but overall this one is going to be a very good previous alternative to people that either missed out on phase 3, or it could even be a 1 spell power upgrade from phase uh, from phase 2 to phase 3. So anyone who didn't get the loot in Normer again or really wants to have 1 spell power upgrade, this one could be an alternative to use, and once again 260 tailoring, 3 heart of fire for 5 bolt of rune cloth, and scrolling down is the exact same mob over here as well, the twilight fire guard level 48 to 49 elite in searing gorge. One more pattern to take a look at here is this one right here, scrolling all the way up, we can take a look. It is the Shadow Weave Mask. This is a head item, level 44, 10 intellect, and 24 shadow spell damage. This one you get from tailoring by completing a certain questline. Now the quest is called the Undermarket, so you have to do the entire questline right here. So you start this by doing the Shadow Weaver. So Shadow Weaver first, then you have the Undermarket, and then you have one more called the Undermarket to go to gadget san and speak to a mob, or like an NPC. After doing this entire questline, you once again get access to this pattern right here, or the entire Shadow Weave set. Now the Shadow Weave set can be very good for Shadow Priests, and Warlocks once again increasing their Shadow Spell damage, and Shadow Priests are really good on the Alliance side, I think even on the Horde side, but definitely on the Alliance side, but Shadow Priests overall have been really good so far, and with the ability to crit on damage over times now, Shadow Priest gets better, and Affliction Warlocks also gets better. Everyone using Shadow Spell damage suddenly gets a lot better. So this one could be a very good either full abyss alternative, or at least pre abyss now for tailoring, we have one more recipe worth looking into, the Cinder Cloth Cloak. This one is a level 50 cloak, 8 intellect, and 13 fire spell damage, so once again very good for fire mages and warlocks and anyone using fire spell damage really. And it could either be a full abyss or a pre-abyss alternative. This one is dropped by a level 53 to 55 mob in Burning Steps. It is the Thorisen Firewalker. In, in Burning Steps, level 53 to 55. This one is going to be very difficult to farm. I think hunters can farm this one and just be someone that can kill a level 53 to 55 mob. Once again, the item itself is 275 tailoring requirement, 5 bolt of rune cloth, essence of fire, and a rune thread. It's a level 50 item though, so definitely will be relevant in the next phase. The only thing is it's going to be very difficult to farm, but when you get this, it's going to be so good for you, especially if this ends up being a full abyss item for farm mages and the destro warlocks it could be absolutely incredible moving, moving over to alchemy we have the recipe for the elixir of greater fire power 250 alchemy for this one, 3 fire oil, 3 fire bloom and a crystal vial, increases spell fire damage, um, yeah, increases spell fire damage by up to 40 for 30 minutes. It's basically the regular fire power elixir we have right now, but the greater version giving us 40 spell damage instead in the fire spell damage school. This one is dropped by multiple mobs in Searing Gorge. So you have the Dark Iron Dwarves basically, the Dark Iron Watchman, Slavers and Taskmasters. It's like in the tunnel tunnels and upstairs of the tunnels, you have a bunch of Dark Iron Dwarves in Searing Gorge. They all have a chance to drop this. Very good place to farm, and this item could be really, really valuable in both the actual elixir and the recipe as well. Next phase. 
Another recipe to be on the lookout for is this one, the recipe elixir of shadow power. This one is basically the same thing as in the past, like the same thing as the greater fire one, but for shadow power this time. So 40 shadow spell damage for 30 minutes, very good for once again, shadow priests and affliction warlocks. Even tank warlocks I believe as well can use this one, and it's basically purchased by the al alchemy vendors in Undercity and Stormwind. Scrolling down you can see them right here, you have Algernon in Undercity and Maria Lumiere in Stormwind City. You can buy them for a certain price from these vendors. The thing is, you can buy this right now, so you can prep for this before phase 3 comes out, and it's on a limited supply, so keep that in mind, you can buy it, but only one person can buy it, and then it has like a half hour to one hour restock timer, and it's not always going to be up. It's like a, um, it's a look of the draw, which ones are available from all of the limited supplies on this vendor, so you can actually get these ahead of time, and you can also buy them on the auction house for a little bit of a markup price. Now, going to the recipe for the Greater Arcane Elixir, increasing spell damage by up to 35 for 1 hour. This one is going to be used by every single caster out there, it's going to be really really valuable. Going down is dropped by a bunch of very high level mobs, so good luck on this one. Like, this one is dropped by the highest level mobs out there. Now the thing is, some of them are actually in the open world, most of them though are inside dungeons. So we'll see if we can actually end up getting this one somehow in Phase 3. I just wanted to mention this because if we do have access to this in phase 3 it's going to be ridiculous and it the recipe itself could be going for so much gold and also having the recipe you can print so much gold as well. It's going to be the barrier to entry of a lifetime and the gold making opportunity of also a lifetime. So as you can see most of the mobs dropping this is either inside dungeons, raids, or elites in the open world. What I wanted to say is that it is actually learned, listed to be dropping from Winterfall Den Watchers in Winter Spring, level 55 to 56, and scrolling even further up, it also drops by the Cobalt Scalebanes in Winter Spring. Now those are level 56 to 57 elites, so what hunters could do here is kite these for an eternity. But let's just say the recipe sells for 2000 gold, and you have to farm for 2 days to get it. That is still ridiculous amount of gold, and that's not the only item these can drop by the way, but I just wanted to mention this because it's absolutely insane, and it's going to be so hard to get, but technically, theoretically, it is obtainable next phase. It's just going to be difficult. Now, that's a lot of caster recipes, let's not forget about the Elixir of the Mongoose, giving you 25 agility and 2% chance to crit. This one is absolutely insane for every melee out there, and it's going to be used by, once again, every melee out there. The only thing is, this recipe does not really have a big barrier to entry, it drops all the time from the Legashi Rogues and the Jadefire Rogues. It's basically the Felwood Satyrs and the Ashara Satyrs from Classic WoW. This is also where you farm fel fel cloth and also Rune Cloth. It's a very popular farm. They even drop mana potions and health potions. I used to farm, I think I farmed my first 2000 gold in Classic WoW in this place. I got to level 60 and I literally just farmed here for so long. I just kept farming and it's a good place to be. The only thing is, so you can see the level 51 to 53 and 50 to 51, and if I put this a little bit more to the side, they have a 5% and 4% drop chance. So this one is not going to be rare at all, the recipe that is, but it should still help you make some gold, and you can, if you can get your hands on this one really early and sell it on the first reset, you can make a little bit of like nice change, I would say. Now we have a couple more recipes, five more to be exact. The Greater Nature Protection Potion, once again, one that is worth including in this video, Video, but it's going to be very difficult to get in the next phase. Well, I say very difficult, but it's not going to be a greater arcane elixir type of thing, but it's still a dropping in western playlands by mobs level 55 to 57. So you have the Rotting Behemoth, level 55 to 56, and Decaying Horrors, level 56 to 57. On, on the uh, Greater Nature Protection Potion. Now the next raid being Sunken Temple, I can definitely see there being some nature mechanics in that raid, because so far we had a little bit of that in Nomer again, but we had the fucking, uh, what was it called? We had the shadow stuff in BFD. I, I can definitely see nature spells being a mechanic in Sunken Temple, and these could be very, really, very valuable to have in that case. Now, next recipe we have is the Greater Stone Shield Potion, increasing armor by 2000 for 2 minutes on a 2 minute cooldown. 
This one requires stone scale oil, thorium ore, and a crystal vial. This one is kind of like the same thing as the uh, arcane elixir. It's dropping by very high level mobs. It is technically theoretically obtainable next phase, but it's going to be very difficult. As you can see, it's dropping by a lot of high level elites, but some of those elites are in, for example, Silithus and Winter Spring. So you could theoretically obtain this next phase, but once again, it's going to be very difficult. And then you have the fact that it's a potion, so how how many people are going to be using this? I mean, we'll have to wait and see, right? It requires level 46. Recipe, Elixir of Brute Force, 275 alchemy skill requirement. It's a level 45 um, elixir, gives you 18 strength and 18 stamina for a full one hour duration. Requires Grum's Blood and Plague Bloom to make. Now this one is contained in the small brown wrapped package from the Dungai's Her Hungry. This is a quest in Ungor Crater, so opening this one up, you can take a look here, it's a reward from the quest. It's a level 55 quest. You have to loot Blood Petal Sprouts in Ungoro, but the required level for this quest is level 47. So you could see a bunch of people in Ungoro farming this next phase to try to get this recipe, and to be fair, it could be a valid gold making strategy, depending on how rare this ends up being but definitely worth considering to do in phase 3, and it's kind of like a weird type of farm, but it definitely makes sense, and then Goro could be a really good place to be in next phase to farm some gold. Okay, it's been 16 minutes, and we're almost done, we have two more to cover, so sit tight and let's take a look at the last two. Now, number one here, or the second to last, is going to be the Mighty Rage Potion. This one increases rage by 45 to 75, and increases strength by 60 for 20 seconds. Now, the Mighty Rage Potion is dropped by the Black Rock Slayers in Burning Steps, with a 4% drop chance. Now, these are level 56 to 57, so the drop rate, or like, the farming these will be difficult in Season of Discovery, as long as it's, like, obtainable from these, um, from these mobs. Hunters should definitely take a look at this farm. This recipe could be worth so much gold, especially when it's, like, Level 56 to 57, a lot of people will struggle killing these mobs, but hunters should be able to kite them out. Now, one more recipe to look at here is the Limited Invulnerability Potion. Requires Blind Weed, Ghost Mushrooms, and Crystal Vial with 250 skill requirement. This one is dropped by a lot of mobs. You have a whole list of 196 mobs, and the best way to say this is that it's a world drop in Phase 3. There's, there's not really much more to say. As you can see, this is dropping by level 53 to 54 elites, regular 43 to 44 mobs. You can get them pretty much anywhere. And there we go, those are some very, very, well, highly likely very lucrative recipes to take a look at in phase 3, and you should definitely consider farming them. The thing is, professions might feel kind of naked next phase, because you don't really learn that many things from your trainers, you have to go out of your way to get recipes. This is not just for alchemy, but for every single profession, you have to go out of your way and find recipes from vendor vendors in the open world, mobs in the open world, and just find recipes at different places, so hopefully this video helps you make some gold. If you do find the recipe in phase 3 and you go back and watch this video later down the line, let me know how much you sold the recipe for, because I think some of these could be very, very pricey. Either way, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. If you want to make more gold as well, check out my classic WoW gold making guide through the link down below in the video description or the pinned comment as well. Thank you so much for watching, as always, I really do appreciate it, and I'll see you again very soon.